Hello, boys and girls, people of all ages, casual redemption fans, hardcore redemption addicts. Well, we're playing the monkey bars deck here, and we're going up against the one and only Joe Mama. And actually, Joe Mama was the big inspiration for behind this deck. A lot of the main deck is actually based upon his version of Nativity, or sorry, his version of uh, Turbo Nazareth. So it'll be a proving ground here to see if we can take take his deck and kind of beat him with it. So we'll see. All right, we're going to roll the dice here, move our mice, and I won the die roll. I choose to go first, and I will use Day of Judgment to figure out what is going on in his deck. Day of Judgment has a star ability that lets me play a Lost Soul from each deck. So right now I'm basically scanning his cards, trying to figure out what his strategy is, um, seeing what dominants are in his deck, notably uh, Three Woes and Son of God, I think are still in there. Those are the cards that are probably going to try to mess me up a little bit. And then I'm going to place uh, a Lost Soul from my deck. So based upon what he has, I feel like Salty would be nice. It sounds like he's trying to set up something with... Uh, tabernacle and usually people use a territory class enhancements like delivered or covenant with david to try and get those fortresses and artifacts out so that's why i got salty there i think i should have paid more attention to fear to see if he had a herdsman of garar in his deck but i think he was playing gray um let's see lost child found i get to play a lost soul from my deck so which lost soul do i want here that is gonna help me out I think I wanted to be safe than sorry. He was playing some Old Testament characters, so maybe the Accuser's Lost Soul that can negate um, negate OT humans in battle would be nice. So we'll see. I don't know. I could be wrong there. He was playing the Complacent Lost Soul, so that tells me he doesn't really have battle-winning dominance. So I, I might have gotten Complacent here, but I think the way my first turn is going to set out, I actually don't want Complacent until later. Okay, so this is nice. We have... Um, Matthew and Simon Peter in our opening hand. So we can go Simon Peter, attack, convert to Meek, get a fortress, ban to Matthew. Matthew can draw. So the, the question is, what are we going to do with this crowd's choice here? If we're using Simon Peter to convert to Meek and get our Nazareth, then crowd's choice isn't going to do much. So maybe we use uh, the crowd's choice to get a resurrection, try to get John. Ban John into battle, get another fortress. Yeah, that seems good. Turning Crouch Choice into like three or four different cards. So yeah, let's find that resurrection here. I'm not sure if there's a better thing I could have done here. Maybe getting a battle winning enhancement, but we already have two of those in my hand. Maybe Crouch Choice getting um, generous giving would be nice. Okay, so I'm getting a little greedy here. I'm holding, I'm waiting to play the resurrection until battle because I want to ban John into battle. But the thing about if I reveal his hand with Matthew and then I draw into my complacent lost soul, then I'm not going to be able to play my resurrection. So this is, this is a little greedy, you know, but if I don't get to play my resurrection here, I don't feel like it's the end of the world. Okay. He has Nicodemus. He has a shipwreck. Okay. Shipwreck is really good to know about. And he has a storehouse. So he has ways around the Turbo Nazareth. Let's see, I draw six or seven cards off of that. That's pretty nice. And now the opponent's just in the situation where he has to try and come back from this. Like, getting all my lost souls out, getting all these fortresses out. He has limited answers. He only has one shipwreck. I bet he would love to shipwreck any one of these things. Let's see, I don't have a dominant to reveal off of John to toss the next, but I do get to draw two. Draw some more lost souls. I have... I have all my lost souls that I want out, except maybe complacent. Let's see. If the opponent blocks... Oh, opponent doesn't even block here. Okay. Um, he could have blocked when Nicodemus drew some cards. I think that might have been nice for him. Maybe he draws into like a scattered sheep and is able to get the lost soul. But opponent decides to give it... Put my artifacts down, get to, down to eight cards in hand. I'm a little hesitant to put down my characters because there's a chance my opponent can ban to them with maybe a resurrection of his own. But I think when I was looking through his deck, he wasn't playing any banding cards. It's really hard to say when you only get 30 seconds to look at the opponent's deck. Okay, Shipwreck is hitting the Nazareth. He plays down his storehouse. Now he's probably going to do a bunch of searching. I'm ready, though. I'm actually ready to play this type of game. I have Book of the Covenant. I have Concealed Riches. Both are great options. 
or when Nazareth is offline. Okay, here's a cool play they do. So even though I have Salty out, which is preventing uh, territory class enhancements, he's playing it on his musician, which said, enhancements of all music used by this character cannot be negated. So I think this is how that works. Even though the character is not in battle, it's like a static ability. I'm not sure. Does the character need to go into battle and then his ability activates to give his stuff CBN, or does it even work when he plays it in territory? I'm not 100% sure, but this is really clever play, if, if that's true. Temple Dedication is giving his stuff protection. He's getting his hand down. He's playing a Mayhem, which will shuffle his hand, and he'll draw six cards. Um, I've, I have double ways to protect my hand, so I get to preserve all my juicy enhancements. Although, honestly, I wouldn't mind shuffling my hand right now. Cards like uh, Day of Judgment, Lost Child Found, you know, these cards aren't really that good right now. I wouldn't mind getting rid of those. Okay, so as far as blocking goes, I have a Brood of Vipers, which is a 12-12. And I can either block with that and do Hare's Temple and just have a 12-12 that tosses everything, which is pretty strong. Or I can try to rely on Brood of Vipers blocked up with two kind of negates. So we'll see what he does with the attack and... I'll try to respond accordingly. Holy of Holies is here, negating characters except priests. Now, I see if opponent had gotten first, they would be able to negate my Matthew, maybe, and I wouldn't have been able to draw these cards. If Knowing if my opponent was a Holy of Holies deck and they were going first, um, something I could have done to kind of play around that was gotten my Humble Lost Soul out of my own deck with my star abilities. Okay, so if it's just Moses not banning anything, I think the play here is Brood of Vipers, 12-12, He's negating me, but that's okay, because I can just play Harris Temple, activate that, and now we're tossing. And I have I have a plot to kill, which is it tosses for six, and then I have a stricken which tosses for five. So I'm pretty feeling pretty good. There's a delivered, which I imagine they might have wanted to play this turn. <laughs> I feel like Temple de dedication is still happening, which protects his guys from harm. But the thing about these kind of toss battles is that the, the source of the toss is Terra's Temple, which is a good card. And the weird thing with Harm is Harm only protects your characters from neutral or uh, opposite alignment targeting. So even though his Moses was protected from Harm, he died in a toss battle. And I don't think dying by the numbers is considered Harm. So that's why Moses died there, I, but I could be wrong. All right, first things first, it's pretty free to activate four Drachma Coin on Peter and draw four cards. Just get more resources. The cool thing about the manger, it, it can also negate uh, neutral cards. So the best thing I can do here is maybe negate his uh, Holy of Holies, even though I may just want to attack with Mary this turn. But just negating Holy of Holies is nice. I got nothing else to negate, really. At most can find my Simon the Zealot for a nice attack. Book of the Covenant can find me a really great insurance for battle winning called You Will Remain. If, if my opponent re removes my last hero from battle, I can discard my Covenant to add a new hero to battle. So that's probably one of my strongest insurance policies right now. A new covenant can grab an enhancement from reserve, so I'm just loading up on gas right now. I'm trying to figure out what is my best attack. It's probably Mary, who can get initiative, and then maybe I can try to follow up with the Ascension. All right, Mary, um, I could negate and reserve his Holy Holies, but I think since that's already being negated, not really a big issue, I'll just take out his Nicodemus, because... He's a character that can play CBN stuff, and that is kind of scary. Okay, apparently he doesn't have any evil characters. Now I get to get down to eight cards in hand. Let's shipwreck his storehouse. We don't want him getting any battle-winning enhancements. Put down some characters. You know, it's never the best feeling to put down characters, but when you have a Hare's Temple out protecting them, it's uh, it's okay. Hare the Great. I'm trying him out in this defense. I don't have any enhancements to back him up, but... Just the 1210 that can uh, choose the attacker is pretty strong. The part, earlier versions of this deck, I felt like were pretty weak to banding. And so that's why I added Herod the Great in here. They're attacking with a lot of characters that are banding, and you block with Herod the Great. You can push them all out of battle, and assuming they have a character in their territory, you can choose that single lone character. For example, like Pharaoh's Daughter. I, if they attack with somebody really big or scary, I can just block with Herod the Great, activate Her Herod's Temple, and then uh, it'll just be Herod versus Pharaoh's Daughter in a toss battle. Okay, Mordecai. Currently, his ability is being negated by accusers, but he has a modifier that says good OT enhancements uh, can't be negated if used by him. So that's scary. 
But if we activate Hera's Temple, then that's not going to be a problem. All right. If the opponent was kind of seeing this line coming, maybe they had a three woes in their hand. But the most brutal thing about what just happened is when I activated my Hera's Temple to reserve the Cup Tide on my deck, it reserved a Complacent. And when you reserve a Lost Soul, it actually needs to go into play. So um, if opponent was trying to play around that, maybe they, when I asked for action priority, they should negate um, Hera's Temple before I have a chance to even activate it because maybe I'll flip Complacent off the top. So as opposed to negating Hera's Temple afterwards. So if you did have a three woes in my hand, this is pretty lucky by me, but another block. And the cool thing about that is I only had to reserve the top card of my deck. That's the cool thing about this deck is um, Hare's Temple is such a powerhouse on de on defense. And when opponents have limited resources, they either want to deal with Nazareth. That's a kind of what their number one priority is. So you notice he had a shipwreck. And it would have been really nice to shipwreck Hare's Temple this game. But he had to burn it on Nazareth even to play the game. So Nazareth is kind of like your decoy. And Hare's Temple can really help your defense get some nice blocks in. I think I would like to try and find a game where opponents drew like their shipwreck and their three woes. That way they're able to handle Hare's Temple and Nazareth. I feel like those are going to be the type of games that are challenging to win for me. Okay, I think I missed what happened, but I think I just attacked and they didn't block. And I got another lost soul. So that means I have three lost souls and the opponent has zero, and I haven't even played Son of God or Second Coming yet, so I just have to draw my Son of God. I have a Territory Class Enhancement in my hand um, that can search for NT good card, but the problem is I have Salty out. So if you're ever in this scenario with this deck and you want to play your Spirit as a Dove, use your, your uh, Manger, you can activate it, negate your own Salty, and then you can play your Territory Class Enhancements. So that's what I'm going to do next turn. I don't know what the opponent can do about that. Let's see. Okay, they're passing. I guess they haven't been able to get any resources this game, and they're just falling so far behind. Each turn, I'm, I'm just drawing stuff, getting playing further and further ahead. The Book of the Covenant is really good in helping that. I'm sitting on a Concealed Riches, too. It's Concealed Riches. I can grab basically anything in my reserve, but I don't even need to. Okay, I drew my Son of God. Problem was, he didn't have any Lost Souls, but we drew a Harvest Time too, so we're just going to Harvest Time, get the Lost Souls out there, and just do Son of God Second Coming, and wrap this game up pretty pretty decis decisively. So that was a fast game. Uh, Joe Mama was trying out a new different type of deck here, but he's had more success with his uh, Turbo Nazareth deck, so we're going to play another game here, and he's going to actually come at me with his Turbo Nazareth deck, and we're going to do the Mirror Match and see how it goes. He's not playing the Soul Surfer package, so I'm wondering if that's going to give me an edge in this particular matchup. On paper, it seems like whoever is going to go first and get their Nazareth into play is going to be at a great advantage because that's going to make it really hard for the opponent to get their Matthew down, drawing cards to keep up. But my deck has a lot of tools to actually keep them off their turn one Matthew. Okay, um, Stricken, Harvest Time, Concealed Riches... I don't feel good about going first with this hand because what am I going to do? I, I can't get to my Peter. I can't get to my Matthew. Stricken is really nice to have in your opening hand because um, if you reveal it, you protect all decks and reserves from the opponent during the battle phase, the next battle phase. So if he's trying to attack me with Matthew and Peter and stuff, my Stricken is going to be protecting his deck from himself. So. so Stricken is probably one of the best cards to have in the opening, especially if you're going second. I also have Harvest Time, which is a great way to interact on his turn for example like if he's trying to attack me with matthew if i didn't maybe have the stricken in play or whatever i could play harvest time get my lost soul that protects my hand and the opponent wouldn't, wouldn't even be able to use his matthew to draw cards so so already i feel like the deck is doing a great job of showing why it might have an edge here maybe i got lucky maybe because of the stricken or whatever but even if i didn't have stricken you know i still have the tools to prevent him from drawing a bunch of cards with matthew and the only way he can get around that was maybe three woes of his own. Okay, I don't have a lot of defense here. I just have Nicodemus and Stricken and a three woes. Nicodemus is, is kind of interesting. I'm trying him out in this defense. I like him because he draws cards, but I feel like I don't have enough NT enhancements to actually make him feel that good. Because sometimes you just have blocks like this where you have Nicodemus and a Stricken, and it's not that strong of a block. I'm sure maybe you'll draw into something, but, you know, the chances are pretty low. Okay. 
Um, he's getting his Matthew. He's going to try to use his Matthew here. His deck's protected. But if he, get, if he finds a way to give his, his own deck protection, with, maybe with like a storehouse or Bethlehem Stable, he will be able to draw cards again. But the key is he has to put that protection down before he goes into battle. So he, he can't find he can't use Peter to go do it. He probably has to get a Crouch Choice or a Resurrection to actually go get the protection he needs. And even if he does all that, I have the option to three woes, whatever he tries to do. I'm going to try to hold on to my three woes, though. He's going for the Resurrection during his uh, preparation phase, which grabs his Bethlehem Stable and his uh, John, I think. Okay, so now that that's making it possible for him to search his deck and draw cards from his deck during his battle phase. Yeah, there is an argument here to negate that with my three woes. Like, even if he just attacked here with John to draw two cards, that means still that's pretty, pretty bad for me. I think I would want to try and negate his uh, Bethlehem stable here if, if I had to do this decision again in retrospect. But I was just wanting to hold on to three woes, and I knew I could get my crowd's lost soul in play to give myself hand protection. So I knew I didn't need to fire it off per se. So I'm firing off the harvest time here, getting some lost souls out of my deck that I think are going to mess him up. Distress will negate his territory class stuff. Complacent is going to shut down any battle dominance. And now it's going to be up to Nicodemus plus Stricken to save the block here. And again, I think I should have three woes his staples here. I can always move it around. There's, there's a bunch of good targets. I can target his Herod's Temple. I can target his Nazareth. I guess the only way reason I might not want to do it is because if I'm trying to play around his Mary, I don't want him to attack me with Mary on turn one and reserve my three woes. Or maybe I do, because I have Nicodemus. I don't know. Because now I'm opening myself up to things like this. He's playing his Angel of the Winds, searching his deck for Peter because he has protection. Now Peter's grabbing Nazareth, and now, you know, things are interesting. It's not, it's not as bad as it could have been. He could have been banding to Matthew here and drawing, I don't know, five cards. But just Peter, interesting to see that he didn't ban to John. Okay, Nicodemus. Nicodemus blocks. The only thing I have is Strick in here. Opponent is going to go for the Hare's Temple activation. Maybe they're scared that I have an NT enhancement. They don't want me to play that. But Nicodemus is doing the mind games. Stricken tosses for five, which is nice here. So Peter is a 10 12. Nicodemus is 7 9. The Stricken will get Peter down to a, a great, reasonable place. Part of me wants this Peter to live also because I have a four drop McCoy in my hand. And the interesting thing about that card is that it actually doesn't require for you to own the Peter. It just says, if a Peter is in play, you can activate it to draw four cards. So part of me is hoping Peter survives this battle. Toss him at him for five. That's not going to kill him. He tosses at me for two. Thorn Stalemate, which is the best outcome I think I could have wanted here. I remember, I couldn't have played any dominance in battle because of the Complacent Lost Soul. Now it's my turn. I survived the first turn. I survived the Onslaught. But I'm under the Nazareth Lock, facing down Stables and a Hare's Temple. I fire back with the stables in my own Hare's Temple as my own. I think I'm going to cash in this drachma coin, draw some cards. Opponent only has two cards in his hand. If opponent has to spend all of his turn trying to dance around what I have and not be able to attack with Matthew or John, I mean, they're working with just limited stuff here. Let's see, I have a lot of offense, that's for sure. Luckily, I don't think I need to search that much right now. I do have a stables out that gives me deck, deck protection, but since they placed their Nazareth down first, that means I will not get that protection. All right. Um, so if I negate their Nazareth with my three woes, and then the next turn after that, I negate something else, I'm going to have protection. So that's cool. Okay. So knowing they only have two cards in hand, I don't think they have a good attack, or sorry, a good block if I just go John, reveal three woes, and toss the next. I have a couple of battle winners in my hand for John. These nice uh, purple, purple slash clay brigade stuff is nice to have for both offense and for both for both the purple side and the clay side. My right, opponent doesn't have a block here. Unfortunate. I feel like if they'd been able to ban to John that last turn, draw some cards, then maybe they could have gotten a block off. But yeah, I feel like the biggest factor of this game is me being able to get the crowds out and protecting my hand from his Matthew on turn one. That I feel like. Is giving me the edge right now. I don't have a lot of defense going for me, that, that's for sure. Okay, he drew Authority of Christ. He's using a star ability to put Simon into play. There's part of me that's wanting to hold the trigger for doing the three woes because I know his deck is 
playing stuff like uh, Book of the Covenant, which can go to his reserve and grab all sorts of gas. And so the longer I wait, as long as I'm doing okay on resources and I don't need to uh, search or anything desperately, I feel like I'm fine. My deck it can play under Nazareth. <laughs> it's funny. Most decks can't, but this deck is built to kind of do that. I just, I feel like I drew a lot of, a lot, a lot of my deck that works well under Nazareth. Although that artifact there, Concealed Riches. I don't know about this card. I feel like Book of the Covenant is super good. Um, but this is a card I'm not sure about. On paper, it seems like a good idea. If there's a no Nazareth happening, I can use Concealed Riches to go to my reserve, activate the cross on a Golgotha that I grab. Oh, an opponent is not attacking there. That is very surprising because I literally had nothing. I feel like if I was in my opponent's shoes, maybe a thing that could have happened was just attack with John, draw your cards. Um, I guess, because, you know, like, maybe there's a chance I don't have anything. I guess maybe they were concerned about me drawing cards with Nicodemus, but I feel like if you're just passing the turn to me, I'm just going to pull farther ahead, especially if you don't have any defenses, or, sorry, resources on for defense. You just need to race. Okay, I'm firing off the woes now. I need to negate their stable because I want to use Matthew to, to draw some cards. They have four cards in hand. And they have Scattered Sheep, Nero, Authority of Christ, Peter. Okay, get to draw four or five off of that. It's a shipwreck. Um, can't play that right now. Opponent has a pretty good block here. They can block with Nero, activate Herod's Temple, and now, yeah, here's the Nero. He's exiling the top card of his deck for Herod's Temple. And now no dominance can be played. And I don't have seven points of power, which I can use to toss down Nero. So I think I'm just going to let Matthew die. Give him the block here. So Nero is protected from dominance and opponent's lone heroes. But if you're in a toss battle with Nero, the thing that's killing Nero is going to be Herod's Temple. So if you have seven points of power and you're in a toss battle with Nero, you can kill him, even though he might be immune to you as a hero. He's not He's not immune to um, Herod's Temple, that's, that's for sure. All right. I'm going to take out his Herod's Temple, although I could have taken out his Nazareth or his Bethlehem Stable, either of which would have been nice. Okay, here's a play that I did. So before I attacked, I activated Daenerys, even though I couldn't search anything. But I know there was a decent chance that I would draw an Emperor off my Matthew. So Daenerys says basically at any time you can uh, cash it in to draw the cards. So if I activate Daenerys before attack, go in with Matthew, draw those cards then draw an Emperor, play it down during my discard phase. During my discard phase, I can use that Daenerys to draw more cards. So that's exactly what happened. So if you're playing Daenerys, don't be afraid to activate it, even when you can't really do anything. Okay, I have a bunch of offense in my hand. I have two evil cards on defense. I have a big Emperor Claudius. He is immune to NT heroes, or sorry, protected from NT heroes and opponent's dominance. And... Currently, I have Harris Temple protecting my Nicodemus and all my heroes from harm. He has a Simon the Zealous, but I don't think he wants to choose my Claudius to block his Simon. I have a Distressed Out, which is negating his Judas territory class character. Okay, Son of God, Rescuing Complacent. That tells me maybe he has some battle winning dominance that he wants to play. Maybe like Angel of the Lord or Glory of the Lord. So, even though I have two NT enhancements in my hand, I don't think I want to block with. Uh, Nicodemus because he's telegraphing to me that he has battle winning dominance and Nicodemus is very vulnerable to those. So I think Claudius is the block here. Okay, so opponent is doing something. You can only control one copy of unique character at a time. So he's banding to my Simon, but he's actually not allowed to do that since he already has a Simon. He has to band to his own. If he kept his Simon in his hand, he would be able to do this, but I don't think it matters that much for this game. He's trying to choose Nicodemus to block, but Nicodemus is protected from harm by Harris Temple right now. So I'm pretty happy with this attack. I think the only thing that's going to worry me right now is if they have a three woes to negate Harris Temple. They already played their shipwreck. Oh, wait. I don't know if actually, I don't know if they played shipwreck this game. So yeah, I think that really safe block here is just Emperor, activate Harris Temple, and just do some stalemating. That's the thing that's impressed me about this defense is like, even though it doesn't have that many cards, just if you block with a big dude and back it up with Harris Temple, like imagine if you had an evil character that says like 12-12, toss all enhancements in battle. Would you, would you play that character? I feel like that would be really good, especially now attack on the text immune to dominance. 
Okay, that could be really good. And then tack on the text um, immune to NT heroes, like, and toss everything, toss all enhancements in battle. That seems really good. And then you think about Herod the Great, who's like, choose a really small guy to attack, toss everything in battle, and he can go get Herod's temple by himself. You know, when I start to think about evil characters like that, I, I get really excited about them. Especially, like I was saying, if I'm playing a deck that there's so many things going on. Your opponent only has like maybe one good three woes. And what are they going to do? They have to negate Akeem. They have to negate Stables. They have to negate Nazareth. They have to negate Harris Temple. They have to negate My Lost Souls. And one three woes isn't going to cut it. Especially when I have Mary out. Okay. So during my upkeep, I used three woes to negate his Nazareth. I flipped up my Book of the Covenant, grabbed uh, Send the Helper, grabbed, and then activated the New Covenant. So now my hand is just stockpiled with ways to win the battle. And I feel like it's a pretty easy Simon attack, choosing Nero as a blocker. And then I'll activate Harris Temple to toss. And I'll toss my seven power enhancement that I just got up. I feel like the only thing that gets around this opponent's on opponent's side is going to be uh, add to battle dominant or a Christian mark. If I was worried about that, maybe I should have gotten, um, let's see, I should have got a You Will Remain. But I had to get Sin the Helper to bounce my own Simon. So if I had... If I had my my normal Simon, I could have gotten you or remain to get a much safer attack. Okay, another lost soul down. I currently have four, and they have one. I accidentally put Son of God in my land of redemption. So if you're ever the disciples deck and you have four lost souls and a eternal inheritance in your hand, you know life is good because all you need is initiative. Once you get initiative, you win the game, and especially with generous giving which I can interrupt the battle, draw three cards and play. You know, getting initiative isn't that hard. I've, I would say one of the core pieces of this deck for sure is Mary. Mary's just so good to attack anything in the territory, getting rid of that three woes that's, that's sitting out there. And also when you convert her to Meek, she's a 1-3. And that pretty much gets initiative against anything in the game. And so it's really nice in scenarios like this where I just need to attack and get initiative, play my enhancement and win the game, rescue a lost soul without even winning the battle. So yeah, Mary, Mary and Simon do both do a great job of that. Cards, um, cards that actually attack Mary and Simon trying to do that are stuff like Harris Temple, where they're trying to toss things, or Glory of the Lord, where we're restricting enhancements being played. So, so that's kind of also why I targeted their Harris Temple, because when it gets to the late game, I want to be able to play my stuff. Okay, he's trying to go for a play with his new covenant, but my Akeem compiler is negating his neutral card. So that's not going to work. I, I really think Akeem is also a core part of this deck. Um, he's just one slot and he does so much. Any artifacts the opponents are trying to play are going to get shut down. Any Lost Souls stuff the opponents are going to play, he's also going to shut that down. And if your opponent burns a resource to kill him or negate him, you're fine with that because you've got a lot, of, a lot of other stuff happening. And if you're, if you're drawing so many cards at Myth Matthew and you're trying to keep ahead of your opponent, Having a card like Akeem in your deck is uh, really valuable, I, I would say. The only thing that I don't like about him is he's technically Old Testament, even though he is gospel in a weird sort of way. So a card that in the reserve that I like to play is called His Sacrifice. And that card is able to destroy three woes that sits in the opponent's territory if it's evil. And um, But that card requires into unity And so Akeem kind of breaks your unity, and it's just not... Not ideal. If you have a key mount and you're trying to get the three his sacrifice down. So maybe there's a way for this deck to bounce a keem. I don't want to cut him. And I know I think Joe Mama is trying to experiment with versions of of this Turbo Nazareth deck playing a keem and then also his sacrifice in the reserve. So maybe it is possible to do it, but I feel like I have a keem down so often. Okay. I feel like that block went really by really fast. It was just another Emperor block with Harry's Temple backup opponent doesn't have the three woes to negate it. And it's just another it's just another free block. I mean, what can I say? I, I really like the Emperor's blocking like this. Maybe I'm not sure if it's worth it to add more Herods that are kind of like also protected from a bunch of stuff. I don't know if you want to go too far into Harry's Temple, you know if that makes sense. Okay. Um Nazareth is back online. Two Nazareth are now maybe I shouldn't have played mine because I cut off myself from Number one, activating Book of the Covenant to go grab your remain. Number two, uh, Mary can't get anything now. Number three, send the helper can't get any cards from my reserve. So 
Laying down my Nazareth here is really not a not a good play. The interesting thing is, um, because I I toggled my three woes off and on their Nazareth while I had my stable out, their protection is basically what they're trying to do is prevent me from searching. But but if if I pause that and then I reactivate that while I have my stables out, all their their plan falls apart. Okay. Eternal inheritance, they blocked with a character that gave me initiative, and I should get it here. GG. All right, we were able to take down the Joe Mama in the mirror match. And I feel like the opponent had been able to attack you, attack me with Matthew on turn one, the game would have been much different. So pretty, pretty um, what's the word? Confirming results? Uh what's the, I'm looking for a better word here. Encouraging. I'm encouraged by these results here. I've played a couple other test games with this deck and the games have also kind of felt like this where I just am able to pull ahead, kind of able to disrupt what they're doing early game and then and just take over the game. And the opponents weren't able to answer everything that was going on. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys around.